Hi, how do you, Keith, I know you. Keith, how do you sell this to current clients that you have dealt with for years? Good question, Keith. So mm. I'll take that one first and then you can dive in with any other comments. Clients that you dealt with for years, I'm presuming you're working with them on a contingent basis. The key to retained, any kind of retained work, whether it's multi-hire work or single search mandates or um, pieces of intelligence, all for me come under the same banner of retained solutions, is that they are just that, is that they're solutions. The solutions to um, the challenge that we face um, and often the challenge that we face is delivering our work and producing results. Producing results on a no win, no fee basis is incredibly difficult, especially in this market. In order for a client to move, I know I'm going around the houses to answer a question, but you'll see where I'm going in a second. In order to move a client from a contingent model to a retained model, there needs to be a problem somewhere. Sometimes the problem is on their side and they're coming to you saying, we just need more CVs. Where are they? You're not delivering what you need to be delivering and we're not getting the results that we're, we're getting. That's the perfect opportunity to explain that it's incredibly difficult to deliver results on a no win, no fee basis. Mm. And here's how, here's why. And explaining the contingent model and why it's so challenging to deliver um, results on a no-win, no-fee basis is part of them understanding why the financial commitment does the exact opposite and it enables us to deliver the results. So that's one scenario. The other scenario is that there is no problem on the client's side and actually they're getting exactly what they want from you on a contingent basis and quite happy, thank you very much. But actually, the problem's on our side. And we are taking all of the risk delivering a great service, but totally exposed to them saying, actually, can you just change what you're doing? Or we've decided not to hire that anymore. Actually, we've just had a CV in from someone else. And the problem is actually ours. And in that case, the problem for them is that they run the risk of us stopping doing what we're doing. So the conversation is slightly different. It's, are you happy with the service that we're delivering? Yes, we are. Everything's brilliant. Just keep doing it. Hmm. I'd like to keep doing that. I'd like to keep um, being able to deliver results for you. But here's my challenge. We're currently working with you on a no win, no fee basis with no financial commitment. And at any point, you can say, actually, stop, or I don't want you to do that anymore, or I've decided to do this instead. It might not be through any fault of your own. You might not deliberately set out to mislead me in that way, but it happens. And we'll, yeah. we know from the last couple of years, anything can happen. But I'm completely exposed and taking all of the risk and totally vulnerable to that which means I have to balance my risk by working on other things at the same time, which means I cannot do what I need to do to keep providing you with these results, especially as the market is getting harder and harder. So yeah. in order for me to continue to deliver the results you have come to expect from me, we're going to need some financial commitment from you in order to make sure that we reach a result every, on every project. So what I'm saying, Keith, is it does depend on the circumstance. There isn't a um, standard fixed way for each client, but it does depend on where that client is with you and how well you're delivering against their requirements on a contingent basis. But hopefully that gives you a couple of examples of, of how to manage that. Nice. I think, um, I don't think I would add anything in terms of how you position that. Lou. I think everything you've said is absolutely right. I would probably just tell you a very quick story. I was speaking to a member of ours um, a couple of months back and he was saying that he always felt a little apprehensive having these conversations with existing customers, even though he was now having them and converting customers from contingent to retained, he still felt a little apprehensive. He said until he outsourced some front end search work to an outsourced provider who did a lot of his research when he took on an assignment. And he said he'd worked with this company for several years and they'd always delivered and he had a great relationship with them. And they would do the work and then deliver him the talent map along with the invoice. And he said, one day they called me and said, it's getting much harder for us to do what we're doing. And actually, this doesn't need to cost you any more, but we just need a portion of the fee at the start on commencement. 
He said, I didn't even blink. It was like, mm. no problem. Thanks for telling me. Yeah, yeah. And actually, I think it's sometimes easy for us to feel concerned and difficult about having these conversations. But imagine if you were on the other side of the fence with a supplier that you trust and you've worked with before. Mm. Would you have a problem with it? I wouldn't. Exactly. Exactly. And and the, the other point that you made um, on a coaching call or on one, one of our conversations, Jordan, was to say, it's our duty to remain ahead of mm. the curve on how to make sure the service that and the results that we're providing for our customers are the very best that they can be. Yeah. In order to do that, we have to keep adapting. Um, one of our gurus and coaches says, you know, uh, there are three things that happens to a business. It evolves or it stagnates or, and it dies. Um, we have to evolve and adapt to make sure that we're staying ahead of that curve. All we're doing here is is exactly that and informing mm. our customers that to stay ahead and make sure that we are um, providing the best possible service. We yeah. We need that commitment in order to to do that mm. so it, it, it isn't it isn't a um it should it shouldn't be a conversation we're frightened of it it yeah. should be our duty yeah. to keep and our absolutely. tools sharp and applying the best yeah. methodologies yeah i mean the other side of that coin is if you don't have that conversation and 12 months down the line the client has a meeting with you and says why have you stopped delivering you've, you've not filled yeah. any of our roles yeah. over the past 12 yeah. months and you <laughs> totally. would say to them well, if I'm honest, I just needed some financial commitment. But I didn't want to have the conversation with you. Yeah, yeah. They say, why don't you just tell me? I know. Or worse, they say, <laughs> I've got a really difficult conversation to have with you. One of our other suppliers has suggested that we enter a retained partnership. So we're yeah. going to do it. Yeah. And then all you do is just kick yourself that you didn't bloody have that conversation in the first place. Yeah, definitely. Um, but of course, selling it, as, as we always say, selling it and positioning it is one thing. Delivering it is something completely different. And it is not just money up front and then a contingent service. It is absolutely, I want to say catastrophic, but it, maybe that's a bit over uh, dramatic, but it is a recipe for um, failure if you don't put a proper process in place to make sure that you're delivering against that financial commitment and you have parameters around what our commitment is in return. Yeah, so just a word of warning there. 